Thank you all so much. It's an honor to be here. Lieutenant Governor Duncan, Speaker Ralston, President Pro Tem Miller, Speaker Pro Tem Jones, members of the General Assembly, constitutional officers, members of the judiciary, Mayor Bottoms, and members of the Consular Corps, and my fellow Georgians. During the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus tells a parable about two builders. The wise builder built his house on the rock. As the parable goes, the rain came down, the floods came, but it didn't fall, for it was founded on the rock. But the second builder was foolish. He built his house on sand. There was a great storm, and his house washed away. As a builder, this story has always resonated with me. You have to pour concrete before you can frame a house. You must build on solid ground. Over the last 16 years, our state has experienced incredible growth and economic opportunity. Wages are rising, and the unemployment rate is the lowest in 18 years. Thanks to the hard work of the legislature, Georgia is now the top state for business six years in a row. With low taxes, a business-friendly government, and access to logistics hubs like the Port of Savannah and Hartsfield-Jackson International Airport, Georgia is the epicenter of job growth, the Hollywood of the South, and soon to be the cyber capital of the world. Through our state's oldest and largest industry, Georgia farmers are also feeding millions of people in countries across the globe. Thanks to the leadership and wisdom of Governor Sonny Perdue and Nathan Deal, Georgia has a solid foundation. The state of the state is rock solid. Over the last eight years, we saw 800,000 brand new private sector jobs created in Georgia. These investments touch every industry imaginable in agribusiness with machinery manufacturers like Caterpillar and Kubota, and food processing companies like Purdue Farms and Harrison Poultry, in aerospace and aviation with Gulfstream, Pratt & Whitney, and Travel Sky in healthcare with Athena Health, Greenway Medical Technologies, and Kaiser Permanente, in cyber innovation with AirWatch, Honeywell, and Unisys, in manufacturing with Precision Products, Toyo Tire, and SK Innovation, and in transportation and supply chain infrastructure with Hopag Lloyd and Norfolk Southern Corporation. I applaud Governor Deal, Economic Development Commissioner Pat Wilson, and department officials for working to create economic opportunity, not only in Atlanta Metro, but in every corner of this great state. As Governor, <laughs> as Governor, I will continue to work with state and local officials to recruit industry leaders to Georgia. Through the Georgians First Commission, we will review regulations that make it difficult for job creators to hire, expand, and invest. We will work to make government more efficient and put hardworking Georgians first. I'm confident that we can build a stronger, more diverse economy, and we can add a, do, a new designation for Georgia's resume number one for small business. With conservative budgeting, Georgia has maintained a AAA bond rating. Our rainy day fund now stands at $2.5 billion. Our fiscal house is certainly in order. 
Last year, the legislature lowered ta the state income tax rates and fully funded public school education. I'm confident that we can do it again. to enhance educational outcomes and build a 21st century state. We must invest in those who educate, inspire, and lead our students. 44% of our teachers leave the profession within the first five years. To recruit and retain the best and brightest in our schools, we must remove heavy burdens in the classroom and keep teacher pay competitive. My 2020 budget proposal includes a $3,000 permanent salary increase for certified Georgia teachers. This is the... <laughs> this is the largest pay increase for teachers in Georgia history and serves as a sizable down payment on my promise to ultimately raise pay by $5,000. We will also include a 2% merit increase for all state employees. These hardworking Georgians play a vital role in serving our families and crafting Georgia's future. We must continue to reward their efforts. In addition to the investments in personnel, we also must prioritize school safety. In the amended budget for 2019, I have included $69 million in one-time funds for school security grants. All 2,294 public schools in our state will receive $30,000 to implement school, school security priorities determined by local school boards, administrators, teachers, parents, and students. But to keep our classrooms safe, we also must address the mental health issues that often lead to school violence. With $8.4 million in additional funding through the successful APEX program, we can focus on mental health in Georgia high schools. These professionals will engage with struggling students and provide critical resources to prevent potential disruptive and aggressive behavior. They will inspire, mentor, and keep our kids safe. <laughs> Together, we will secure our classrooms and protect our state's most treasured assets, our children. With your help, we will continue to build. With places like Atlanta, Augusta, Savannah, and Columbus continuing to grow and thrive, it still feels like the Great Recession in parts of rural Georgia. Businesses are closing. Opportunities are drying up. People are losing faith, but as governor, I will work to ensure that someone's potential is not determined by their zip code or their county. But <laughs> by working with the House Rural Development Council and their colleagues in the Senate, we can expand access to high-speed internet, quality health care, and a good education. Through strategic partnerships, we can ensure that every part of our state has access to opportunity, that kids can graduate and raise their families where they were raised, that local companies in rural Georgia can thrive, that farmers and agribusiness leaders can get their Georgia-grown products to the marketplace, and that every Georgian is equipped with the right tools to succeed. By working across party lines, we can 
and we will stand with those impacted by Hurricane Michael. In the aftermath of the storm, I witnessed firsthand the devastation in South Georgia. The storm damaged forests, groves, and fields. It ripped away homes, churches, and livelihoods. Today, we are joined by a hardworking farmer who runs his family cotton, soybean, and timber farm in Donaldsonville, Georgia. He represents only one of the countless Georgians who took a severe hit from Hurricane Michael but is determined to move forward. This farmer and family man, Greg Mims, sits in the gallery today, and it's my honor to recognize him. I want to thank President Trump, Vice President Mike Pence, Agriculture Secretary Sonny Perdue, Governor Deal, and you all, the members of the General Assembly, as well as Agriculture Commissioner Bar Gary Black for their solid leadership in the wake of this disaster. Thank you so much. I want to also applaud the efforts of officials at DNR, GEMA, the Georgia Forestry Commission, Georgia National Guard, Department of Public Safety, Department of Public Health, Department of Corrections, Department of Community Supervision, and all of the first responders who provided necessary aid after the storm. Thank you. We will continue these recovery efforts. Let's revive, rebuild, and renew hope in rural Georgia. There's no doubt that criminal justice reform will be a lasting legacy of the Deal administration. Without question, the leadership of Governor Deal and the General Assembly has changed our state for the better. I look forward to supporting initiatives that save costs, strengthen communities, and give nonviolent offenders a second chance at life. To keep all Georgians safe. <laughs> to keep all Georgians safe, we must build on these reform efforts. Today, I'm honored to have one of Georgia's most distinguished members of our law enforcement family here with us. He is a fighter in the strongest sense of a word and a true hero among us. Last year, he was wounded in the line of duty and nearly lost his life. While chasing a criminal, he was shot literally right between the eyes. After multiple surgeries, I'm proud to tell you that he's with us today next to his wife, Kristen, in the gallery. Help me in joining and thanking Covington Police Officer Matt Cooper.
Coop, just know that we are continuing to pray for your recovery. As Georgians, we must never forget the sacrifices of our law enforcement community. Last year, six officers paid the ultimate price in protecting and serving Georgians' communities. The loved ones of Lo to the loved ones of Locust Grove Police Officer Chase Maddox, Savannah Police Officer Anthony Christie, Ludawissi Police Chief Frank McClellan, Jr., Gwinnett Police Officer Antoine Tony. DeKalb Police Officer Edgar Flores, and Henry County Police Officer Michael Smith, you remain in our thoughts and our prayers. Their service, their... Their service will never be forgotten, and we, were, we will always be forever grateful. Fellow Georgians, it's time to build. It's time to renew our commitment to public safety. It's time to honor those that we lost by taking action. As governor, I'm committed to addressing the rise of gang activity in our state, a growing threat requiring our immediate attention. According to a recent survey conducted by the Georgia Gang Investigators Association, there are over 71,000 validated gang affiliates and 1,500 suspected gang networks in our state. These gangs are pawns for the Mexican drug cartels, pushing opioids and drugs. They are, they are buying and selling our children for sex. My budget proposal includes a half a million dollars in initial funds to form a gang task force within the GBI. This highly qualified group of experienced law enforcement personnel and prosecutors will work with local districts attorneys and law enforcement to stop and dismantle gangs in Georgia. By utilizing the criminal gang and criminal alien database, which will be funded with existing resources from the Criminal Justice Coordinating Council, we will track and deport drug cartel kingpins who are terrorizing our communities. By working with attorney... By working with Attorney General Chris Carr, federal, state, and local partners, we can undermine organized crime. Together, we can build a safer future for all Georgia families. Finally, while different parts of our state have unique challenges and concerns, all Georgians deserve a patient-centered health care system that puts families first. The status quo is unacceptable. 79 counties have no OBGYN. 64 counties, no pediatrician. Nine counties have no doctor. Insurers are leaving our state, and hardworking Georgians are struggling to pay their premiums. I have included $1 million in the Department of Community Health's budget to, to craft state flexibility options for Georgia's Medicaid program. We will ex We will expand access without expanding a broken system that fails to deliver for patients. We will drive competition and improve quality while encouraging innovation. I will work with the legislature to grow the rural hospital tax credit tackle the doctor shortage, and build a healthier Georgia. <laughs> yeah. 
As we envision and plan for Georgia's future, we should not forget how we got here. The road traveled and the people who stood with us. Today, my wife Marty and our daughters Lucy, Jarrett, and Amy Porter are with us. I wouldn't be here without their support. Marty and I built businesses and a family together. She's as solid as a rock, and I know she's going to make a fine first lady. I hope she doesn't know this, but today Marty is in the seat where her late father, Representative Bob Argo, once served. Thank you, Representative Hughley, for the honor of allowing Marty to share your seat today. We were, that was an incredibly kind gesture. Mr. Bob was a good old Southern Democrat who never met a stranger. As many of you all know, he loved the Georgia Bulldogs. And he, <laughs> and he worked across the aisle to deliver for his district. Representative Argo raised Marty to be a fighter and a public servant. When I was frustrated as a business guy who wanted to make a difference, he encouraged me to run. He stood with our family through thick and thin. His legacy continues to inspire us daily. Representative Argo was a wise man, and he knew that building is faster when there's more people involved. We have more that unites us than divides us. Join us, and let's put hard work in Georgians first. I say pick up that hammer and some nails Together, let's build a safer, stronger Georgia. Thank you so much. May God bless you, and God continue to bless this great state of Georgia.